Hey everyone, welcome back to Tease Review. Today we're going to look at macromolecules. Now here are the objectives from the ATI study manual. Now you can see that you need to demonstrate knowledge of the four types of macromolecules. Um, I don't know why they only listed three. It could be a typo. I think they are supposed to have all four listed here. So they are carbohydrates, lipids, proteins, and the nucleic acids. And you need to be able to describe how basic macromolecules function in the biological system. So basically, the specific functions of each group. Uh, here is some specific information from uh, uh, the TSA study manual. I think this is actually more helpful because it's more specific about what you need to know. For example, you need to know the structure of each type of uh, uh, micromolecule and how the chemical structure is related to the function. Right? We always say that the structure determines the function. You need to be able to recognize the reversible chemical reactions that make big micromolecules and the reactions that break them down. Right? So those two kinds of chemical reactions are reversible. So one builds from small to large. That's what that's the chemical reactions you use to build big micromolecules. The other type of chemical reaction breaks big micromolecules down, right, to smaller molecules, which are the monomers. Now you might not know what monomers are. We'll talk about them in a second. And lastly, you need to be able to recognize the specific micromolecules in some familiar food items. For example, he's may ask you which of the following food uh, is rich in, say, lipids right, or carbohydrates. Okay, now let's look at uh, some of the basics. Macro with A means a large, right? So life is made up of micromolecules. And these micromolecules are usually big molecules. So that's why we name them macro with A. Now, if it's I, micro, that means small. For example, microorganisms are organisms that are so small, you can't usually see them with your naked eyes, right? You have to use some kind of instrument, such as a, a microscope, to be able to see them. All right, now, these big molecules are usually polymers. Polymers. Now, polymers are usually made up of repeated subunits or atoms, and those repeated subunits are known as monomers. I'll give you a quick example. Starch, which we'll talk about in a second, is a type of carbohydrate. Now, starch is also a big molecule and a polymer. If you look at the starch structure more closely, you will notice that starch is actually made up of repeated monomers, and these monomers are glucose. Okay, so you can see these kind of repeated glucose molecules are linked together, right? Once they're linked together to form a large molecule, that large molecule is known as a polymer. And the subunit, in this case, uh, glucose, is the monomer. Okay. Like I said, the living organisms are composed of four groups of macromolecules, and they're listed here. We'll go through each one in this lecture. Okay, uh, first we need to look at the chemical reactions, which are reversible to build macromolecules and to break them down. Because when you look at your body, this is going on in your body all the time, right? When you eat food, the polymers, the big molecules in your food, are broken down to their respective monomers, right? And usually those monomers are nutrients, so they will be absorbed in your body and they will be transported to cells to be utilized. For example, starch will be broken down to glucose, right? And the glucose is transported by bloodstream to the cells and the cells will take in glucose um, and extract the chemical energy for fuel, right? We talk about this in the AMP section. First, I have some kind of definitions here, just in case you need it. So mono means a one, so that means a single subunit, right? And usually monomers are the building blocks for polymers. Poly means many, so polymers are 
usually large molecules with many repeated subunits are linked together. Okay. So that's a monomer and a polymer. When you want to build polymers, right, when you need to build a macromolecules, the chemical reaction uh, you use is going to be dehydration synthesis or condensation synthesis. TEAS uses both names, so that's why I listed both here on the slide. So in dehydration synthesis, you remove a water molecule before you can connect the two subunits. I know this is very hard to kind of picture in your mind. Um, I have some chemical reactions in the next slide, so just bear with me. Just remember, in dehydration synthesis or condensation synthesis, you need to remove a water to be able to link the two subunits. Right? And then once you know um, the subunits are joined, are linked, then they form the polymers. Dehydration synthesis is an anorganic chemical reaction, which means the chemical reaction requires energy. So you have to, you know, have energy input. You need to provide energy for the chemical reaction to proceed. Um, this is how I remember under that's kind of like endo, right? So that means energy is going in, right? Because endo means in. So energy going in, that means you need to provide energy. Now the reverse chemical reaction, the opposite is hydrolysis. Now in hydrolysis, uh, you provide water, right? Which, which is the opposite of dehydration. In dehydration synthesis, you remove water from the monomers. But now in hydrolysis, if you want to break down the larger molecule, you need to provide water. And then the polymers will be broken down right, to monomers. This chemical reaction releases energy, which means this is exergonic chemical reaction. Exer, you can remember this means out, right? Energy is coming out. So that means the chemical reaction releases energy. Let's look at some diagrams to demonstrate this process. First one, dehydration or condensation synthesis. So you can see uh, in this chemical reaction, we need to remove water from the monomers. Right? So one monomer is going to donate a hydroxyl group, OH. The other monomer is going to donate a hydrogen atom. So this will come off as water. Why? Because in order to link these two monomers, they each need to have available electron, right? And then you have two electrons, which will form a covalent bond. Now we'll talk about covalent bond in a later lesson, but just know that uh, each of these monomers needs to have a, an extra electron so that they, these two monomers can form a bond so that they can be joined together, right? So this is achieved by removing the hydroxyl and hydrogen. So now, you know, monomer one has this extra electron, monomer two has this extra electron. So now they can be linked together, right, to form a covalent bond. So this is how you go through dehydration to synthesize from a, from a smaller component from the subunits, which are monomers, to a bigger molecule, which is the polymer. In hydrolysis, okay, hydro means water, everybody knows that, right? Hydrolysis, that means kind of broke down, right? Some, you, you're breaking down some bigger components, bigger molecules. So basically, the name indicates you're providing water to break down this large molecule, right? So you can see here, you have a polymer right here. The monomers are connected, right? So this is a polymer. You provide water, and then water can kind of attack this uh, covalent bond between the two monomers, right? And then break the chemical bond. Okay, so that's uh, the chemical reactions that build and break down macromolecules. So you need to remember that one is dehydration or condensation synthesis, and the other one is hydrolysis. All right, now here is just a quick summary of the monomers of the four micromolecules we're talking about. For carbohydrates, the monomers are monosaccharide. Again, this might be a new term for you. Don't worry, we'll um, cover this a little bit more in detail in the later slide. So mono means a one, 
monosaccharide, that means sugar. So monosaccharide is a one sugar unit, right? Which is some kind of subunit, right? When you have all these simple sugars, sugar molecules connected joint, that will form a polymer, right? So usually carbohydrates are big polymers of monosaccharide. Lipids. Now lipids are um, strictly speaking, not polymers because lipids do not have this kind of repeated subunits joined together. We'll talk about the structures in more detail when we get to lipids. Now proteins, proteins are made up of amino acids. So amino acids are the monomers for proteins. Nucleic acids, DNA, RNA, right? The genetic material is uh, a type of nucleic acid. So these nucleic acids are made up of nucleotides. The nucleotides are the monomers for nucleic acids. 